along the nail, and welcome to the Immuno Project. We here at the Immuno Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, and advice. And uh, one of my viewers has asked me to do a video with respect to the mezuzah. Um, okay, um, what's a mezuzah? There's a commandment in uh, the Torah. It happens a couple of times. Where it says we are place we are to place the words of God on our doorposts of our house and on our gates, and um, so you will see in Jewish homes, especially if you come in through the front door, you'll see on the right side, the upper third, the lower part of the upper third of the door, approximately, depending on your height, eye level. You'll see a small rectangular case. It usually has the Hebrew letter Sheen on it. Many people mistakenly think that this is the mezuzah. It's not. That little rectangular case is exactly that. It's the case. The scroll inside, that's the mezuzah. So, if you have a wonderful, beautiful, decorative case, but the mezuzah is not kosher, it's not handwritten on a, on a parchment by a specially trained, highly trained sofer, a scribe, if there's so much as a crack or a missing part of a letter, it's not kosher. You can have a, a $500 case and inside is, it's trafed up and that's, that's not a kosher mezuzah. Many reputable dealers, um, bookstores, will refuse to sell only a case. They'll say, I want to buy that mezuzah case. Okay, it's $10. Mazel tov. How much, how much is that going to be? $80. But it's a $10 case. No, no, no. Included in the price is the mezuzah. I don't want the mezuzah. I just want the case. Many reputable dealers, dealers will refuse to sell a case without a kosher mezuzah. Um, it will come as no surprise to anyone that the laws uh, involved in writing out the mezuzah are very complex. So make sure you buy your mezuzah from a reputable source, uh, um, an acknowledged uh, Jewish bookstore. If you can get one from a scribe, it's more common to uh, get one uh, from a bookstore you can get them online, but just make sure they're kosher because you'll be spending a lot of money for nothing. Uh, uh, mezuzahs can range from anywhere from $30, $40 American uh, and up. Um, where is it placed? Let's talk about the front door. In the front door, the post, the doorpost, actually the word mezuzah means doorpost. It reminds us of the uh, the story of the Exodus, where the Jews put the, the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and the lintels, the doorpost. It's done on the right side as you're coming in. It's on the top third of the, of the, door, uh, of the doorpost, usually in the lower part of the top third. It can't be closer than a handbreadth from the top. It's, that's, higher than that is too high. Lower than that is too low. And the rectangular case should be, the top should be pointed toward the inside uh, of the house or the apartment. Um, right hand side as you're going in, top facing inside as you're going in, upper third. But you don't just have one on your front door. Any entranceway to the house, if there's a side door, if there's a back door off, off a porch or something like that, off a deck, um, they should have mezuzahs. Mezuzah, singular, mezuzahs or mezuzot, if you want to be Sephardi and Israeli about it. Um, also, the rooms inside the house, um, the kitchen, the living room, bedrooms, um, but not the bathroom. That's considered uh, disrespectful. Uh, I have heard people put uh, mezuzahs on garages if the garage is um, 
used for storage. If it's just a car, people don't. Speaking of cars, uh, some people uh, have these little tiny mezuzahs, or at least mezuzah cases, that they put in their car, in their, uh, in their uh, glove compartment. Uh, you don't have to put a mezuzah in a car. It's not a residence. It's not a, per uh, a permanent thing, but a lot of people do. I call them carzuzas. Um, the scroll, the handmade scroll, this, by the way, is a photocopy. This is not an actual parchment, parchment scroll. The scroll contains uh, two paragraphs of the Shema, and in the two paragraphs of the Shema, in addition to reminding us about the exodus, the exodus of Egypt, it also has the, the commandment for mezuzahs. You'll see at the end of the first paragraph, um, al mezuzahs besecha uvesharecha. And similarly at the bottom, al mezuzahs besecha uvesharecha. Uh, the, on the doorpost of your house and your gates. Um, so what constitutes a, a house? If it's your home, if it's you own the house, it's yours. You, it, it has the mezuzah. If it's rented, um, if you're, it's a rental department, you have to put it on. Um, if you're, okay, if you're there for 30 days or less than 30 days, let's say if you're there for less than 30 days, you don't have to put up a mezuzah outside of Israel. Inside of Israel, my understanding is that even if you're there for, uh, for under 30 days, you put up a mezuzah. Uh, a completely temporary dwelling, for example, a sukkah, does not need a mezuzah. Um, it is customary when one passes a mezuzah, or either in the front door or throughout your house, um, to touch the mezuzah as you're walking through the doorway and then kiss your hand. This is a constant reminder. Um, there is a famous story, I think I may have made reference to it once or twice in some of the videos. Why the 45 degree angle? In many Sephardi homes in Israel, the, um, the mezuzah is straight up and down. There's a mechoikis, there's a dispute between Hillel and Shammai. Um, Hillel says that the, um, the mezuzah must go straight up and down along the doorpost. Shammai uh, said, no, it's supposed to go across. If you know anything about the academies of uh, Hillel and Shammai in the Mishnaic uh, age over 2,000 years ago, they could not reconcile. So what we do is in order to reconcile the two disputes, we put it as much as you can on a 45 degree angle. Sometimes it's, there's not enough room, so you just tilt it a little bit. Why? As a compromise between these two uh, positions. And it's also a reminder. Um, those of us, uh, uh, those of you who are married, um, when you enter your home, it's a reminder of Shalom bias. It's a reminder that having peace in the house is often uh, about compromise. Um, uh, if you're selling your home um, to uh, a Jew, um, leave uh, the mezuzah scroll. If it's an expensive uh, case, then you know, replace the case with something uh, cheaper. Uh, but if, it per if the purchaser is Jewish, you should, uh, you should leave him a, um, a mezuzah scroll. Um, there are a lot of uh, laws uh, with respect to the mezuzah. I've covered just a few of the basics. If you go to um, com, chabad.org, they will give you a, a lot more uh, detail. But remember, very important, this is the mezuzah. The case is not the mezuzah. The mezuzah is the scroll. It's rolled up from the right side over it's often placed in a in a plastic case and on the back of the um, scroll is the one of the names of god shaddai if you have a, a glass or a clear plastic case that will sometimes you can see through that but um if you don't have one get one if you're jewish 
uh, I understand that some Noahides uh, put um, mezuzahs on their homes. You're not obligated to, you're not forbidden to, um, but uh, it, uh, even for a Noahide, it has special significance. And um, I know uh, a young lady who's very dear to me, and uh, I don't think I've ever seen her walk through uh, any of the doorways of her house without touching and kissing um, the mezuzah. It means a lot to her. It should mean a lot to all of us. Um, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until uh, next time, on behalf of the mezuzah, uh, on behalf of the Amuna Project, I almost said the, on behalf of the mezuzah project, on behalf of the Amuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.